from New York, the worst thing to do is nothing, said the president to the Democrats of the Senate at their weekly lunch in a meeting he described as focused as much on the national economy as anything else, but which insiders report was emotional. Our fifth story on the countdown, not President Obama, President Clinton called in to rally those senators and choosing that unexpected combination of econ and emotion. Mr. Clinton raising the stakes as he delivered a pep talk of sorts on Capitol Hill today, speaking behind closed doors to the Democrats in the Senate, TalkingPointsMemo.com reporting that he attended the lunch at the request of his former White House advisor, Rahm Emanuel. Now, of course, the president's chief of staff, as well as at the request of Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Senator Reid announcing today that he now expects to bring the bill to the floor for debate next week. President Clinton, perhaps the best living symbol of the dangers of failing to pass health care reform. Senate sources telling Huffington Post that President Clinton made an emotional plea for action this afternoon. Afternoon. Mr. Clinton himself telling print reporters in the hallway after the meeting was over that his argument had as much to do with economics as it did health care or politics or emotion. Quoting him, I think it's an economic imperative. We're in an economic crisis. We're trying to bring America back. And I have always been concerned that, you know, 16 percent of our people don't have health insurance and 30 percent are without it at any given point during the year. President Clinton advising the lawmakers to work in the realm of the possible. Quoting again, it's not important to be perfect here. It's important to act, to move, to start the ball rolling, to claim the evident advantages that all these plans agree with, and whatever they can get the votes for, I'm going to support. In other words, passing any bill is better than passing no bill at all. Quote, I think it is good politics to pass this and to pass it as soon as they can. But I think the most important thing, it's the right thing for America. We just simply, the worst thing to do is nothing. The worst thing to do is keep dragging around a 16.5% of GDP health care system that doesn't cover everybody, doesn't get the right results when we can do so much better. The Senate aide who was briefed on the meeting, paraphrasing the former president, as concluding, if you don't win this, the Republican opposition will define the issue. Time now to turn, in, uh, turn to Senator Jack Reed, Democrat of Rhode Island, member of the Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, the Health Committee in the Senate, and an attendee at today's luncheon with President Clinton. He's joining us, as you can see, from Reagan National Airport in Washington. Senator, great thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, Keith. We know what President Clinton says he said. Uh, what else did he say that you can tell us about? Well, uh, the president urged us to seize this moment, that uh, this would uh, be something that if we did not act effectively, we wouldn't have the opportunity. And he emphasized, as you indicated, Keith, that there's a huge economic issue here as well as moral issues, but the economic issues are increasingly important. Uh, we won't be able to afford health care in this country if we do nothing. Uh, we've seen families that are facing the, the loss of health care because they've lost their job. We need to create a system in which the health care is affordable and reliable and everyone feels confident they will have it regardless of their work status. And he emphasized those points very eloquently. Senator, I would think it's fair to say that your caucus would seem to need uh, unifying to some degree, at least on the edges, as much as, if not more than, some sort of, sort of pep talk, as as brilliant as President Clinton is at pep talks. Uh, did uh, did the, the former president succeed today on both counts? Did he, did he coalesce people in any sense of that word? I think he indicated uh, how important this is and how much that we have to work very cooperatively and carefully in a collaborative way to come up with a, a very good plan. But as he indicated, uh, anything as complex as health care reform was going to be a continual work in progress. But if we don't start, if we don't cover all of our citizens, if we don't make it affordable, we'll never be able to get a handle on the, the cost of health care, and that will continually erode our economic position in the world. And his experience, not only as a president, but now as someone who travels the world, mm -hmm. is something that was very influential. Uh, uh, Mr. Clinton's evident pragmatism on this uh, shines through all of these quotes uh, that he gave to the reporters in the hallway afterwards. You had said over the weekend that there's active debate among senators about a trigger or an opt-out to the public mm -hmm. option. Is the public option now itself uh, a, 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 a subject that's being addressed in a totally pragmatic point of view? Well, I think it is, and I think 
from my position or a totally pragmatic view, would argue strongly for a public option. Uh, one of the things that everyone complains about, I met with some small businessmen yesterday up in Rhode Island, they complained about the increased health care costs to them from private insurers. Every year, 18, 20 percent increases. And unless we have competition, uh, then we'll see that. For example, in my state, there's two major insurance companies, 80 percent of the market. That's not mm -hmm. competition. Uh, we've got to get that competition. The uh, the other quote that I wanted to ask you about, uh, the paraphrase, actually, I shouldn't attribute it to the president directly, but, but a, a briefed aide described that as... Uh, uh, the question of uh, of not letting the Republicans define the issue. How does that apply, practically speaking, once uh, debate begins, if it does, as scheduled next week? How do you prevent that from happening? Well, I think the, the major way we prevent it is by working together to pass health care legislation. This is the closest point we've been in the Congress since... Uh, ever, since uh, the 1940s or even the 1930s when Franklin Roosevelt talked about it. We've got to, as I say, see this, this moment. If we fail, then uh, the story will be written not only about the failure, but about uh, sort of imagining what caused it. And it'll play into a lot of the erroneous rhetoric about, you know, we've seen the death panels, the, uh, the, the, the fact that this is going to take over all health care. The essence of our plan is a very vigorous private health care system that is on an exchange in which people can make choices based upon their needs, their satisfaction, and their and, and the cost of the plan. And that's the essence, I think, of a, of a, a competitive solution. Senator Jack Reed of Rhode Island, uh, great thanks, especially uh, at the airport. Thanks. And I'm glad we didn't wind up uh, hearing you getting paged during the middle of that. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Keith.